We've got geometry this month, and you know what that means. That means I need my man Harvey. How's it going, Harvey? Yeah, I got in trouble last time I tried to solve these problems without Harvey. Oh, it was a big mess. But yeah, I got him here. He's going to bail me out if I get stuck. But Harvey, I'm not going to need you on the first problem. I can handle the first problem because I can see everything right here. I don't need somebody who can see things that aren't there. So let's tackle this one. You just hang out right over there. I'll give you a yell when I need you, all right? Yeah, cool. Thanks. So we got this silo-shaped figure right here. And we have a semicircle sitting on top of a square. And it's all embedded inside this big circle. And we're told that this semicircle has a diameter of 2. That means we can start labeling some things. We know this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. Square has side length 2. This is 2. This is 2. These each, these pieces down here, these are each 1. And, well, if this whole thing, this is radius is r. This whole thing will be r. That tells me this little piece right here is r minus 1. Don't be afraid to write all over your test. You see me scribbling all over my diagram. Label your diagrams. It allows you to see things. And what I see here is a right triangle. I see a right triangle. I want to use the Pythagorean theorem, but uh, how am I going to use the Pythagorean theorem here? Wait a second. This whole thing, this whole thing is 2. This is r minus 1. So this piece right here plus this has to be 2. Well, that means that this piece right here is 3 minus r. Because this plus this adds up to be 2. And now I can use the Pythagorean theorem right there. I can go 3 minus r squared plus 1 squared equals r squared. Well, that's pretty easy to deal with. r squared, that's pretty easy to deal with. This one's a little bit trickier. I'm going to write it out like this, 3 minus r times 3 minus r plus 1 is r squared. And when we multiply this out, we get 3 times the 3, that gives us a 9. 3 times the minus r, that's minus 3r. And the minus r times the 3, that's another minus 3r, that gives us a minus 6r. Minus r times minus r, that gives us a plus r squared. Plus 1 equals r squared. Subtract r squared from both sides, these are going to cancel. That's nice. And I'm left with 10 minus 6r is 0. So 6r equals 10. Divide both sides by 6. Then simplify, I get r is 5 thirds. And we're done. And we didn't even need Harvey. Yes, Harvey, I still need you. I st don't go away. Please don't go away. All right, cool. Move on to the next problem. See, there's not even a diagram. I'm definitely going to need you on this one. Right triangle has sides of lengths. 8, 5, and 17, and then we inscribe a circle in the triangle. That means we start with our triangle here, and it's a right triangle, that's nice, and then we inscribe a circle in it. You're just going to have to use your imagination that that's a circle. And I want to find the radius here. I know that this whole thing here is 8, this whole thing here is 15, and this whole thing up here will be 17. Radii. Oh yeah, we want, we want a radius. We don't have any radii in our di radii in our diagram. We should add radii to our diagram because that's what we're looking for. All right. So where should we draw them? Uh, well, I like to draw them to tangent points because radii drawn to tangent points give us right angles. So each of these is a right angle. Now look at this down here. If these three are right angles, that tells me that this one's a right angle as well. I know that this is R. I know that this is R. I got four right angles, two consecutive sides are the same. That puppy is a square. That tells me that this is R and this is R. That tells me this out here is what's left over after I chop this little R piece out. That tells me that this is 15 minus R. This piece up here, same deal we got. This is 8 minus R. And now, well, we got tangents. This and this. These are two tangents from this point out here. They have to have the same length. So because these two tangents are the same length, that means this piece up here is 15 minus r, and this piece up here is 8 minus r. And now we have two expressions for the same length. I've got that 17 sitting out there, and I can also add these two. And this is often our goal in a geometry problem is label up our diagram until we have two expressions for the same thing. Then we got an equation. We set them equal, and we're all set. So we're going to add these two up, 8 minus r plus 15 minus r, and that's going to give me... 23 minus 2r, and that has to equal that 17 that we had from before. So we've got two 
r equals 6, which tells me that r equals 3. Now, what we just did right there is nothing really special about the 8, 15, and the 17, except that it's a right triangle. Now, here's what I want you to try on your own. Start with any old right triangle, go through the same process, and see if you can come up with a formula for the radius in terms of the side lengths. What? Area? What do you mean, area? You can use area to do this, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have time for that right now, Harvey. I got, I got one more problem to do. So I'm not going to go through the, R, the, the whole area thing, right? Okay. No, Harvey. It's not because I don't know how to do it. Okay, maybe it's a little bit because I don't know how to do it. But, all right, there's an additional challenge for you. All right? Find a way to solve this problem with area. And then, well, you can go ahead and use that same process to find a formula for the radius in terms of the side lengths using area. And then see if that formula is actually the same thing as the formula you get when you use this process. And if they look different, well, you better think about it long and hard and see if you can figure out why they're actually the same. But before you do that, we have one more problem. We got a square. Circle, semicircle. Oh boy. And our goal is to find the radius of this circle. Goal. Pythagorean theorem again. Harvey, square, semicircle, circle. There are no right triangles. Build them. Okay, we're going to try to build some right triangles. Use the Pythagorean theorem. That works on just tons of, tons of geometry problems. So we'll start off, we've got to add to our diagram. We don't just stare at it. We we'll go ahead and add some radii because that's what we're looking for. And once again, we form a little square up here. So this is, this is the R that we're looking for. This is R, this is R, this is R. This whole length here, that'll be 4 minus R. And we're going to have to use this semicircle somehow. I know that, well, its diameter is 4, so its radius is 2. And, well, whenever we have tangent circles, I like to connect their centers. So run right through the point of tangency. This will be R. We know that the radius of the semicircle is 2, so this is 2. So this whole thing is 2 plus r, but I still don't have a right triangle. Build one. Oh, right. We just keep extending this down, and now we have a right triangle. And we know all the dimensions of this right triangle, because this right here is a rectangle, so this down here is r, and this over here is 4 minus r, it's opposite this side, so that's 4 minus r. And we know that this little side right here, that's 2 minus r. And now we can use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle right here. We have 4 minus r squared plus 2 minus r squared, and that equals 2 plus r squared. And now we've taken our hard geometry problem and turned it into a hard algebra problem. What? <laughs> Algebra, you're out of here? <laughs> All right. See you later, Harvey. Thanks a lot, man. I, you got me through the geometry. I can take the algebra from here. We've got an algebra problem now. We've turned our geometry problem into an algebra problem. Let's just turn the crank and knock this down. We'll go back here, write our algebra problem over, get a nice clean sheet so we don't get confused by all that geometry. And we've got this equation right here that we want to solve. So now we need to square that out and write that out as 4 minus r times 4 minus r. Do the same thing with each of the others. And once you get a lot of practice squaring out binomials like this, you'll be able to skip this writing down the middle step. But 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times the minus r is minus 4r. Another minus 4r that gives me minus 8r. Minus r times minus r gives me plus r squared. Let's do that again, but with 2 this time. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 2r minus 2r gives us a minus 4r. Minus r times minus r gives us a plus r squared. And over here, one more time, 2 times 2 is 4, 2r, 2r, that gives me 4r. r times r is r squared. So now let's kind of group all these things up. r squared plus r squared, that's 2r squared. Minus 8r minus 4r minus 12r. 16 plus 4 is 20. And that's r squared plus 4r plus 4. Bring everything over here, and we've got r squared 
minus 16r plus 16 is 0. Now we need to break out a little quadratic formula because I can't factor that. So we're going to use a little quadratic formula here, and we're going to get r is 16 plus or minus negative 16 squared. I'm not going to multiply that out because I'm a little lazy. I'm going to get the factor 4 times 1 times 16. I'm going to have minus 4 times 16 right here. This is all divided by 2. Now, you can watch how my laziness pays off here. This is 16 plus or minus the square root. This is 16 times 16 times 4 minus, minus 4 times 16. We can factor it just like that. It's factored out of 16. That makes it a lot easier to deal with. Now I'll bring that 16 outside the square root, and I have 16 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 12 all over 2. Divide that 2, I've got 8 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 12. Of course, the square root of 12 is just 2 times the square root of 3. And finally, I have 8 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3. What, what are we doing in this problem? I've got so lost in this algebra, I forgot what the question is. But at least I know what r is. I'm going to take that back to the problem. I know that r is 8 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3. Um, well, I can't be 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3 because the radius isn't bigger than 4. So it must be the negative one that we want. Our answer is 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 and we're done.